Hey guys, and welcome back to Shovel Knight. It's time to take on the final member of the Order of No Quarter, Propeller Knight, and prepare yourself for there is an abundance of bottomless pits in this stage. Yeah, I easily have to say, Propeller Knight and his stage is probably the hardest part of the Order of No Quarter, barring like the last few stages, obviously. Like you said, there's tons of pits, and Propeller Knight himself is really fucking annoying, but we can talk more about that when we get there. Oh man. This music, though, I've just kind of been sucking off the OST for the whole game, but I don't <laughs> care. I like me a good game soundtrack. High above the land. I really love this theme. Like, it does make you feel really kind of pumped up to take on this stage. I mean, yeah, it'll get annoying once you fall in all the goddamn pits. Oh, yeah. But at least you'll be having a good time with the tune. <laughs> yeah, that joy will slowly start to uh, weed itself off, I can assure you. I like the way the stage starts, though. It is like, in a way that not a lot of the other stages kind of begin. Like, you're not on the ship right away, there's a little bit on the ground, and the music just builds until you get onto the ship. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, again, you know, it has a really cool backdrop for this, uh, otherwise obligatory air-level-themed, you know, kind of stage. I, and, you know, it always has that interesting combo, and I think in particular, like, the music and just the whole really grandoise layout of the thing makes this stage really kind of fun to go through when you know what you're doing. Grandoise. Grandiose, I'm sorry. Grandoise <laughs> sounds like a Pokemon, doesn't it? Oh man, yeah. If you're listening, Game Freak, come to us, we have all the good ideas. Well, I think every fan has an idea on what to do with Pokemon. Nobody just is willing to listen to them. <laughs> How about Magnificent Phoenix? Magnifics. Uh, yeah, something like that, okay. Okay, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel now. How did you find the flying machine, mate? Um, well, like I said, uh, really the only major problem I had with it was, um, again, the pits. And like I said, that's always been a consistent uh, challenge in a Shovel Knight. It gets particularly bad um, when you get to the sections where the winds are so strong that they're blowing Oof, you around. Yeah. But inside the ship, like here, it's not too bad. Just... Just as usual, you know, like, take a cue from me, Mr. Defensive Playman. Uh, just take your time, kind of analyze what's going on. You're not on a time limit, so just take it slow and you should be fine. This guy's fucking annoying, though, unless you know what to do. Did you constantly, uh, kept getting caught up in his... How would you describe it? Uh, I'm trying to figure out which attack you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry, the one where he slams the ground, the stun lock, there we go. Oh, uh, that's not too bad, once I figured out how to do it. I just had annoyance with them in general. Okay, fair enough. I do like bouncing on the whole uh, cannonball things they have going, that's fun. And it's also always fun to find treasure in the walls, naturally. And chicken, don't forget chicken. I'm so glad Propeller Knight keeps chicken in the wall, just in case. Ah, but you see, I am a great cook as well as a great romancer, ha <laughs> ha! You have found one of the seven golden magic turkeys I have prepared. Why would you help me? Why would you ever help me? I was wondering how to get in here. I've never done this. Like, I... I think I did it, like, once as Shovel Knight. And then I tried to do it as Plague Knight, and it didn't fucking work, so I was like, fuck it. Well, I've read, like, a few explanations of how to get into the corridor. Like, drop down from above, that didn't work, so just use the mobile gear and you'll be fine. Yeah, that seems to be the easiest way. I think I actually dropped down into here. Or I think I just bought... It's been a bit, so I don't even remember if I bought the damn thing. Recollections of the Hell Dragon coming soon. Well, I'm recalling it right now. That's why we have footage. Because if if we had footage when I was doing it, it'd be the haziest as fuck, you know, terrible footage you'd, you know, kind of get. The Propeller Dagger, a relic that allows the player to fly horizontally through the air over a short distance. The Propeller Dagger can also be used to ram into enemies. I personally find this more fun to use than the Dust Knuckles. It's a, uh, you know, pretty decent and kind of, uh, aerial weapon, too. I, I, my main use is just for mobility, but in that regard, it's still pretty good. I never really built up enough confidence to use it to speed through levels, so, uh, get ready for a couple of instances where I just bounce off the scenery. You know, and that makes me think, like, I really now have to look up, like, a speed run of Shovel Knight, and I want to see how they use all the different relics to kind of just gun through the levels. That would be interesting. If they get the relics at all, yeah. That's true, because, uh, you know, again, you have to go out of your way to get them. At the very least, I would think, well, you can't really speed through it, I realize, because propeller, uh, the propeller dagger, you only get that near the end, so they would have to just kind of optimize platforming techniques to begin with. All right, the first go of that, how not to go across jellyfish. Second one, how to <laughs> go across jellyfish. Yeah, this is an interactive kind of uh, FAQ. 
like we'll show you what not to do and then we'll show you how to do it right. It's this learning method that helps our students succeed where others have failed. I think that mage is my least favorite of the mages. He fires a, uh, well, a fireball that kind of splits and goes like vertically and also down. Really annoying to dodge. You know, it's especially part with this stage. Great view of the Tower of Fate back here, mm -hmm. by the way. I love that. Yep. And, you know, just sunsets in particular are cool. That's why I kind of liked, uh, you know, Twilight Town, despite all the shit that happened in it. But, um, where was I going with this stage? <laughs> <laughs> you had a point. Just run away. Uh, you know what? We'll just uh, see if it comes back later. <laughs> something, something, bullshit, meme, speedruns. There you go. These enemies are actually really annoying and I don't like them at all. Like, they could very easily cause you to fall off. So what I would do is I would prioritize killing them as quick as possible with the flare wand or your relic of choice. I was told to use the flare wand, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Wait, you were told? Who was telling you this? I have other professors, other masters who have given me tips. Professors of video games, do they have those? <laughs> yes, they do. Let's see, I studied at TV Tropes for years to get my degree in video games. Oh, it's Professor Tropes! Here he comes again, recounting everything! <laughs> it reminds me of that Professor Wikipedia video. You know, on college humor. Samus Aran! <laughs> this section right here can give you some trouble unless you know you're taking it slow, like I advised earlier. Just, you know, take your time, try not to use these platforms right away, and you should be fine. I care not for checkpoints. Just abusing them. Like, you're beating them up for their lunch money, I just realized that. Well, you know, Shovel Knight's a little bit of a bully, but he likes to keep that side hidden. Well, what's important is that he's not the Black Knight, thus that makes him the good guy, and it's perfectly okay. Uh, well, you know, that could be open to debate. It's super easy, by the way, to accidentally jump onto the fans and get knocked up into the spikes over here, so you really want to be careful if you're not using the phase locket. Yeah, THD ain't kidding. I've done it more than once. <laughs> there you go. See, we have legitimate experience now. Mm, I have sight in my sources, if you will. <laughs> I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think I'm accredited, so I don't think you can use me on a research paper. Source my own incompetence. <laughs> I love these guys. They're trying so hard. They're putting on a show, but I just don't care. No, no, no that's, my, that's my money. My savings. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't have hidden it in a place clearly marked as a hidden area. Don't walk past me! Oh my god, the, the, I call this section the Humbler, because that's what, exactly what it's going to do to you. These sections in particular are the ones that really come to mind when I think of Propeller Knight stage, so you really have to kind of watch what you're doing here and understand the way that the wind flows, especially to make sure you don't accidentally get tagged by the spikes in the ceiling. It's right near the end of the stage as well, which just makes me think of Dimps and how they usually design their Sonic games. They usually put like a bottomless pit or some kind of really nasty gimmick at the end of the stage and it just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Fortunately, the winds are slow enough so that you can easily maneuver, you know, while you're in flight. So it doesn't feel too bad. This is a lot more tricky though. <laughs> I was gonna say, just as the words were coming out of your mouth, I was there with a correction. Yeah, these winds can fuck right off. Yeah, here I definitely uh, repeated things a lot, but th again, thanks to the good checkpoint system in this game, I felt punished, but it didn't feel like I was set back too much, you know what I'm saying? And also, the lack of a live system really helps make the game a lot more accessible, I find. Like, yeah, you could say it's a little bit casualized, but who gives a shit? I can just get straight back into the action, and if I die, that's my fault, who cares? Yeah, exactly. It's way better than, like, Freedom Planet, which has this arbitrary life system that doesn't even matter because you can just kind of go back into it anyway, so... Alright, brace yourself. It's time to take on the romantic flyer himself, the sky-high bad guy, Propeller Knight. You have a stupid hat. I want a propeller hat. Well, the one in Mario was pretty good, actually. Gotta make, a, gotta make like, more levels based around that propeller helmet. Have I told you I am French? Why is he French? It makes no sense. It's fucking Propeller Knight, doesn't matter. Oh, whatever. Boss Bio. Propeller Knight commands the Enchantress's flying machine with the cockshot attitude of a sky pirate. With his heli helmet, he can zoom short distances with ease. Shovel Knight encounters Propeller Knight on top of the aircraft as it zooms through the sky. Earth fights against air in a true battle of elements. Pro's talented fencer, mechanical heli helmet, debonair. 
Cons, arrogance, lightweight, outrageous accents. Yeah, yeah, the accent is a pretty big con, I realize. Big thing about Propeller Knight is that the reason he's so hard is that he has this incredible tendency to make you fall in pits all the goddamn time. That's easily the hardest part about him. Plague Knight struggles way more unless you have a particular technique, but for Shovel Knight, really, again, the shovel drop does work, but he does like to get in the air to make it hard to hit him. I would really recommend being more defensive and especially watching out for his rapier attacks, which can easily catch you off guard because of how fast he moves. I think I actually panicked here. Well, I just watched the menus. They'll start to go. They're gonna be going in a second. Just freaking out, blowing hard. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was because I had gotten here before, but I died. He actually knocked me into a pit. Oh, he knocks a little rose away <laughs> when you beat him. Yeah, and the tears come out of his eyes. Oh no, I have been beaten. What a puss. You know, there's a a rooster in uh, the second village that kind of implies he sold someone a flying machine. I don't know if it's the same flying machine as the one we just romped through, but there you go. It probably would be, yeah. Oh, but I want that meal ticket now. Okay, I'll have a dream, I guess. I dream of shield night. I always keep falling over the Grand Canyon. I don't know why. All right, guys, bring the pain. I don't know why I downed my uh, Icor flask unnecessarily. I was kind of still coming down from the flying machine at the time. Well, you're using the uh, uh, Warhorn pretty well here, actually, to take care of a lot of the enemies. Come on, you can fall a little bit faster. You better save her, bitch. <laughs> okay, I guess if you stab her in the head, that works. What? It counts, alright? I suppose it is a dream. I'm just gonna rob the forest of all of its money. I think this actually might be our last health upgrade. Yeah, you only get like four from the Order of Noah Quarter. You have to buy the rest. Oh, ain't nothing in life free, bitch. And at last, we see our next path. The path to the Tower of Fate. But, um... But we'll take care of that in a bit. I believe I'm gonna have to take a shortcut back. But first... I remember when you posted the screenshot of this on Twitter. You were so glad. Like, you were so smug. Yeah. <laughs> can't fly, can I? Watch this, bitch. Wing. See, that's why you can't make fun of me anymore. Hey, come back. I want to chastise you some more. Sorry, I got treasure to collect. Tough shit, dude. Oh, madam. Kind of hard to tell, really. Oh, this feels good. Oh, it feels really good. It does feel good in a game when you're really super mobile, like, especially with, like, air dashes and that kind of thing. Those kind of games are just really fun to play, in my opinion. I would use the Propeller Dagger more, obviously, for that kind of thing, but it costs magic, and I'd rather use that for the Flare one for a more safe long-distance attack. A very low cost. Well, obviously, I was about to compare it to uh, the Warhorn, but uh, that's, a, that's a costly beast. I'm trying to remember if... I probably did this one, but I'm trying to remember how often I died on it. Like, which of the, uh, you know, little mini, uh, stages here I died the most on. Probably, I think, the first, because I didn't really grok it that well. But then I kind of knew what to do, so it got better over time. Well, it was a different type of stage, really. Not all of the relics have their own relic stages, but, uh, I guess coming up with stuff for, like... The flare wand or the alchemy coin would uh, result in a stage that's not really that fun to play through. Now you can easily just kind of spam the, uh, you know, dagger over this, but you had a different plan. Yeah, face lock it hype. Why the fuck is shit always exploded? Yeah, you didn't even do anything to remotely blow it up. Oh, uh, I guess the old crone at the beginning was a bit pissed. We. <laughs> It's the only way to travel. Ow. <laughs> Alright, no one's gonna help me up. I'm only defending the whole world over here. See, this is why they don't make a catapult knight, because uh, Shovel Knight would be completely invincible to his attacks. Alright, let's go give Jake Knight his sheets. I do love, uh, again, very brief uh, Plague of Shadows mention, how you can do the same thing in that uh, DLC, but he's looking for stuff to write on, so he just always has to use the back, because the front is filled with music notes. Uh. So I thought that was a neat little twist.
Thank you, masked person who can't possibly sing with a mask in front of his mouth. Well, he doesn't need to sing. Just the music. Just the acoustic version will do. Yeah, that's true. You know, just the instrumental, I guess. <laughs> yeah, instrumental was the word I was looking for. Ah, oh, he's brewing up something cool, and a little bit of uh, chili here to kick it into gear. Oh, it's a big old hunk of mystery meat, but fair enough. Filet mignon? I've had filet mignon before, it's pretty good. Oh, look at this guy over here, giving it all this with his fancy cooking. Have you ever had filet mignon, <laughs> you tool? <laughs> Have you ever cooked a steak? <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure this isn't legal, honey. <laughs> I believe we're going to max out our magic here. 100 on the nosy. Yeah, that's as high as it can go, and it can't, unfortunately, power as much as I would like, but it's good enough, I suppose, for somebody who focused so much on Flare Wand. It's five spams of the horn, so it's all good. Well, that's true. Yeah, you're going to spam that a few times, at least. You know what we're doing now, don't you, Hell Dragon? Are we doing this every fucking time we come? Yes, we are. <laughs> For a little bit of a twist at the end. See, I want to laugh, but then you do that absolutely terrible laugh, and I just forget to laugh. Uh, well, we'll see you guys later. We uh, probably won't be coming back here much. We'll see you back next time on the Shovel Knight playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't leave yet. There's still like a minute. Okay, this sheet has dirt on it. I don't even know want to know where you got this from, but I'll pay for it anyway. Uh, it's soaked with the aura of really bad puns. The local happenstance. Hmm. I do like how almost every area, or every area of the village, one of the two, has its own unique theme. Like, when you go into the bar, when you go see Mona, when you're up on the streets here. I like how they call it the juice bar. You know, it's kind of a dig against Nintendo localization. Yeah, I just got that. I really want to see, like, a super serious fantasy world with an actual juice bar. That would be funny. Like a Game of Thrones kind of juice bar. You know what, little girl? You didn't help me up, so fuck your toys. <laughs> 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 Look at her face. <laughs> oh, it's fun to be a shovel knight. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.